dear friends. Today we will talk about music. Music, it surrounds us everywhere and exerts significant influence on all aspects of our life. The impact of music on the person's health, his or her emotions and mental development was the subject of the recently published book of the publishing house series called The Secrets of Music. The book was authored and compiled by Tatiana Mikushina. In addition to that information, today we will consider the impact of music on the person's spiritual development and we will try to understand how music determines the course of the evolution of consciousness. This theme was discussed in great detail by Elizabeth Clare Prophet in her lecture Sound, Rhythm and Music and Their Impact on Souls in the Energy Flow in the Chakras, which she gave in 1977. Her lecture provides fundamental and truly revolutionary knowledge, which requires our serious consideration. The main idea of Elizabeth Clare Prophet is that music is the force which can be used both for the good and for the evil, and which is the factor that determines the direction of the development of the civilization. If people use the correct harmony and rhythm, which is inherent to all of the cosmos, it facilitates the connection of the person with his real or divine self. It is from this unity in the prehistoric past that the great cultures of the Golden Age were born. The distortion of the organizing elements in music leads civilizations to degradation, fall, and then to disappearance. Music affects the energy flow through the person's chakras. It is the direction of this flow that determines the development of both the individual and the civilization as a whole. Let me give a brief overview of what chakras are and what role they play for the people. Modern science, which has thoroughly studied the physical body, has no knowledge of the subtle anatomy of humans. The initiates of India, through their clairvoyance and spiritual experience, have taught for many thousands of years that outside the physical body, in their etheric body, people have subtle centers or chakras. The word chakra means wheel in Sanskrit. According to the Vedic teachings given in the ancient Indian scriptures, such as the Yoga Sutras and the Upanishads, there are seven main chakras located along the spinal column, which are shaped like lotus flowers. The Muladhara, or the root chakra, a lotus with four petals, is located at the base of the spine. The Svadhisthana chakra, a lotus with six petals, is located above the genital organs. The Manipura, a lotus with ten petals is in the area of the navel and the solar plexus. The Anahata Chakra, a lotus with twelve petals, is located in the area of the heart. The Vishuddha Chakra, a lotus with sixteen petals, is at the front of the throat. The Ajna Chakra, or the third eye chakra, with two large petals, each of which is divided into forty-eight petals, that is ninety-six petals in total, is located between the eyebrows. At the crown of the head is the Sahasrara, or the crown chakra, a lotus with 960 petals with a corolla in the middle made of 12 petals, so it is 972 petals in total. The endocrine system is responsible for regulating processes occurring in the human body, as well as the activities of the internal organs. Each chakra is inseparably connected to one of the endocrine glands. Due to this, a channel is formed through which the divine energy flows from the chakras to the physical body. It is the energy of life that helps a person to live and develop physically, mentally, and spiritually. A person gets only 20% of his energy from food, whereas 80% of his energy comes to him from the outside, through the energy centers. 
A person could not physically exist without such an energy exchange with the environment carried out through the chakras. The chakras are a form of transformer. They convert and lower the high frequency of the divine energy continuously flowing into the human body to the frequency at which the subtle bodies vibrate. The amount of energy that passes through the chakras depends on the person's level of development. The teaching of the Ascended Masters given through Tatiana Mikushina states that the amount of energy that passes through the chakras of an ordinary person is small because most people are too burdened with their karmic load. The more spiritually developed the person is, the greater the amount of light that he can bring into the world. A stem runs from the center of each chakra and connects it with the spinal column. This allows the chakras to have access to the sushumna. The sushumna is the most important energy channel that runs along the entire spinal column. It runs from the bottom, the base of the spine, to the top of the head, and it is the link between the energies of the cosmos and the earth. The kundalini energy is dormant at the base of the spine. It is the energy of the Divine Mother, the creator of the entire universe. According to the definition of Hermes Trismegistus, it is the strongest of all forces. It is able to both create and destroy, depending on its direction. Omra Mikhail Ivanhoff wrote the following in his book, The Centers and the Subtle Bodies. Once awakened, it is directed either upward or downward. The direction of the kundalini energy does not depend on the will of man, but on his qualities and virtues. It rushes to where there is food for it. If it goes upward, the person gains the highest spiritual development. And if it goes downward, this can lead to very disappointing results. The one who, without being pure and able to control himself, awakens the energy of Kundalini, becomes a victim of unrestrained sexual passion that takes him to the abyss at breakneck speed, and of excessive ambition that causes him to rebel against the entire world. Thus, as the person masters the energy of the mother, the Kundalini fire ascends in a spiral along the spine, causing the chakras to turn and releasing the powers and abilities hidden in each chakra. This is the spiral of ascension in which the God-realization of a person takes place. The next stage of human evolution in the new cosmic cycle is the unity with the real, divine self. On the slide, you can see the symbol of the Ascension, the Caduceus of Hermes Trismegistus. If the divine energy is misused, this can lead to degradation and destruction as well as physical and spiritual death. What role does music play in this process? Elizabeth Clare Prophet said, Music accompanies the flow of energy everywhere in the cosmos, even in the very cell of life. It is truly the soundless sound which we hear only when we're in tune with its frequency. Music facilitates the subtle tuning of the chakras and has control over our lower bodies, over the emotions, the mind, and the disposition. Depending on the time, it can be soothing, inspiring, invigorating, balancing, or stimulating. The fibers of the auditory nerve are the most widely distributed and have the most extensive connections in our body. There is scarcely a function of the human body which is not affected by musical tones. Now I invite you to watch a video. It is an excerpt from Elizabeth Clare Prophet's lecture about the attunement of the chakras with the divine harmony through various music instruments.
through the correct use of the sound, we govern energy in all of these planes of consciousness that are marked by the seven petaled chakras which are before us. The base is the mother, the next is the soul, the center of soul awareness, then the solar plexus, the center of desire, then the heart, the center of the threefold flame and of our divinity, the throat center, the center of the word, the third eye, the center of God vision, and the crown of enlightenment. Sound and rhythm is for the attunement of the chakras as the instruments for the harmony of God. Our chakras may be off pitch, sharp or flat. The one who has attunement with a real self, the adept, has his chakras vibrating at the correct key for the cosmic sound and rhythm to pass through him. It is the goal of meditation and the use of the science of the word to attune the chakras so that we may be instruments of cosmic spheres, the seven spheres of cosmic consciousness. We find that the chakras correspond to certain instruments and release the energy of those chakras. The base chakra is the rhythm of the drum accompanied by the voice of mother. Out of the very rhythm of life, within our own mother center, we can hear the long lost voice of the mother that we knew so many thousands of years ago. As the mother sings, she is calling to our soul. In the woodwinds, we have the homing of the soul at the level of the seat of the soul chakra. The harmony of the waters of life, the great feeling of the desire of God to be God which we experience in the solar plexus is realized through the tremendous span of the organ. For the attunement of the heart, we hear the harp, and for the secret chamber of the heart, the harpsichord.
For the throat chakra of the word, we have the attunement by the brass. mastery of the 96 petals of the third eye chakra which form two distinct petals we have the piano requiring the mastery of the energies of alpha and omega for singleness of vision For the release of the light of the crown chakra, 972 petals for the enlightenment of the Buddha, the strings. The civilizations generated by the real or divine self created in prehistoric times the culture of the Golden Age, which was characterized by harmony and rhythm, the rhythm of the Mother Flame. Out of the Mother Flame comes the rhythm of all rhythms. As the flame of the Mother leaves to join with the principle of the Trinity of Life, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the four sides of the base of the Pyramid of Life are born. Now you hear the sound of the drum, which promotes the release of the mother energy. The right rhythm maintains the proper flow of energy.
On the next slide, you see the time signatures that were common to the civilizations of the Golden Age. The whole creation is based upon the mathematical formula of rhythm. The denominator that is divisible by four is connected with the mother and is the base of the pyramid of life, fire, air, water, and earth. As the chakra petals begin to turn by the action of our meditation and the sounding of the word, they begin to manifest the rhythm of life. Starting with the 4-4 four, four time, we feel the release of mother energy in a disciplined cycle, and the wheel of the base of the spine chakra begins to turn. Out of this turning, the 3-4 time is produced that corresponds to the beating of the heart. The 3-4 time is the rhythm of Alpha and Omega, whirling in the center of the heart. It is out of this whirling energy that the worlds are framed. The 6-8 time gives us the rhythm of the soul, reflecting the doubling of the 3-4 time of the heart. The vision of the soul is reflected in the 2-4 time and in the two main petals of the all-seeing third eye chakra that guards the vision of the soul as the soul gains the mastery of the Alpha and Omega principle. The twelve petals surrounding the heart chakra are present in the twelve eight time. The outer rhythm of the heart, the twelve eight time, and the inner rhythm, three four, denote the circling of the energies inside and outside. The doubling of the 5-4 time gives us the 10 petals of the solar plexus chakra for the master of the water element and its movement. This requires strict discipline, such as the test of the 10, the 5 secret rays times 2. The 7-4 time gives us the momentum of the 7 chakras. And finally, the 12-4 time gives us the rings of the causal body that form around each succeeding chakra as the person attains self-mastery. So, we have discussed the pulsation of the chakras in the ascending flow of energy, which provides evolutionary development. What does the descending flow, which leads to degradation, depend upon? Elizabeth Clare Prophet said, The degradation results from the distortion of the rhythms of the mother. The distortion of the divine rhythm had brought civilizations to destruction a number of times in cosmic history and the history of Earth. From these lagging civilizations, Earth inherited the rhythms of voodoo, the rhythms of the black magic religion. With the use of the voodoo rhythms, the black magicians enslaved the souls of people on the African continent and destroyed two civilizations of the Golden Age that existed in prehistoric times. In the 19th century, these rhythms were brought to America by the black slaves from Africa and gave birth to jazz. Since 1835, the blacks gathered at Congo Square in New Orleans, where they danced, sang, and performed voodoo rituals. The music was created using primitive traditional instruments and was mainly intended for dancing. Since among the African instruments there were practically no instruments capable of creating a melody, musical diversity was achieved through the polyrhythm. One rhythm was laid over a second rhythm, third, and so on. The constant rhythmic improvisations transformed this seemingly primitive music into a complex system of separately existing rhythmic lines. The voodoo rhythms are usually accompanied by the black magic rituals, sacrifices, and lead to excitation reaching a frenzy. Dancing lasts to the point of complete physical and emotional exhaustion. As in the insane rhythm, the life power gets literally exhausted. The voodoo rhythms are the distortion of the root chakra at the base of the spine, the energy of the mother 
because the drum, as you know, is the instrument associated with this chakra and is able to awaken the energy of the mother. Thus, the rhythms of voodoo contribute to the release of this energy from the chakra. You may recall that we said in the beginning of the lecture that this energy goes where there is food for it. The ascending flow of energy is made possible by one's virtues, which he attains as a result of discipline and working on himself over a long period of time. Otherwise, the energy is manifested in the form of sensual pleasure and sexual arousal. Energy released from the chakras in this manner is easy and does not require much effort, unlike the method of bringing it in order. The black magicians knew that in order to destroy the soul, they must first destroy mother. The one who does not have the love tie to mother is the emotionally, psychologically disturbed individual. Destroy the mother light and the mother rhythm at the base of the chakra and you collapse the entire structure of the temple of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. In the end, these gatherings of the blacks were prohibited by the authorities. But in 1885, Charles Body Bolden became inspired by the spirit of these people and began to play this music in a new way. Thus, he gave birth to a new musical style, jazz. Ten years after he created the new musical trend, Body developed a severe mental illness. He was sent to the hospital, where he died 20 years later. This was the result of the destructive impact of jazz on the temple of the soul. Jazz became the music of brothels and was later allowed to be played on dance floors and in bars. For some time, the resistance to jazz was great in America. The morality of the middle class condemned jazz. This attitude was gradually softened and jazz became part of the generally accepted way of life first in America, and then in the whole world. The main engine of jazz is swing, which means swinging, spinning, and which denotes the polyrhythm of jazz. Even the musicians themselves have trouble explaining what swing is. It is believed that the rhythmic complexity of swing needs to be felt in order to be played. Swing is achieved mainly by means of a syncopated rhythm. It is well known that syncopation, from the Greek word syncope, which means cutting up or shortening, first appeared in percussion instrumental African music, and then it became one of the most characteristic expressive means of African American jazz. Once it used to be popular to loosen the notes in a row so that they were all played with syncopation. Now it looks primitive and naive, and such type of swing is called sailor's swing. As when a sailor leaves the ship, he continues to shake for a long time as if still on the waves. This swing was used by Louis Armstrong. Then this technique became refined and more complicated. What is syncopation? It is the shift of the accent from the strong beat to the weak beat. It is called the off-beat playing technique. One musician compared it to stumbling while walking normally. In addition, the nature of swing music is achieved by the irregular placement of the accent. For example, the accents of the melody part may partially mismatch the accents of the rhythm section, or the accents of the right and the left hand parts of the piano score may not coincide with each other. Swing is also characterized by the triplet rhythm, which we will discuss later. Here is what Elizabeth Clare Prophet says about jazz. Jazz is the perversion of the crown chakra, taking the wisdom of the father. It has a complete absence of discipline and therefore provides no cup for illumination. It has the jagged patterns which cause the descent of energy from the crown to the lower chakras. Jazz is responsible for the overemphasis of the sexual nature. The orgiastic element of its syncopated rhythm produces a hyper excitement of the nerves and loosens the power of self control. It forces all of the energies of the temple and of the spinal altar in a downward pattern, in a jagged rhythm, 
so that when these energies become concentrated in the lower chakras, they must be released in some form of sensual pleasure, and as we will see later on, in all forms of destructivity, including murder and mayhem. Here is another citation by her. On first contact with this music, it is violent to the soul. But as it becomes a part of our culture, we become accustomed to it, and as with all addictions, whether they're alcohol, nicotine, drugs, sugar, or whatever, it becomes something that we want more and more and more of because it keeps on taking and taking and taking from us. This energy robs you of energy. It releases the energy of the chakras so that you have to keep hearing it in order to have the additional stimulus. So, the appreciation for the original sounds and music is dulled as our senses become broken by the harsh rhythms and the jagged force field that we have through jazz. As we will see, all the styles of modern pop and rock music have originated in jazz. Thus, the rhythms of voodoo have firmly established themselves in the contemporary dominant musical culture. Both Elizabeth Clare Prophet and Tatiana Mikushina talk in their speeches about the degradation of society under the influence of music with a distorted rhythm. Here's what Tatiana Mikushina says. Let us watch an excerpt from her video, Some Kinds of Music Are Weapons of Mass Destruction for People's Souls. Chakras pulse in a certain way, each in its own rhythm. But this rhythm is precisely a multiple of four. Music that we call classical, folk music, mantras, all of them are divisible by rhythm four. Four. But. Everything began to change in America when musicians or workers from Africa started using their folk music. That music is voodoo music. What is a voodoo rhythm? The voodoo rhythm is a black magic rhythm that distorts the rhythm of human chakras. It is a multiple of three. Therefore, when people listen to the music with the wrong rhythm, just by listening to this music, it blocks their chakras, and the chakras close. That means that music has a very subtle impact, and when we listen to music with the wrong rhythm, we block the flow of the divine energy that descends through our chakras into our world. And further distortion began starting with starting with with jazz. First jazz, then blues, then rock music, and now there are some newer modern styles of music. All of them are multiple of rhythm three, and all of them break the rhythm of human chakras. Thus saying that there is good rock music and there is bad rock music is completely senseless. Any kind of music that is composed with a wrong rhythm, absolutely all of it is destructive to the spiritual development of a human being. It simply cuts the individual off from the divine energy. And then it appears that we discuss how good the performers are, how good their audio equipment is, and the lyrics are good, and the rock music is good, and other things they have are good too. But all these discussions do not make any sense because we have cut off the flow of the divine energy at its source from the very beginning. In other words, we have cut off the hose which delivers the divine energy to our world through our system of chakras. And further reasoning is just senseless because we have already torn ourselves away from God. 
merely by listening to music. It was an absolutely genius invention, of course genius in a diabolical way. It simply turned the entire course of human evolution to a non-divine direction. That's the moment when it occurred, when the wrong rhythm appeared, and now this wrong rhythm is just everywhere. It is in the stores, in the streets, at concerts, in the headphones, in our homes and on our TVs, everywhere, absolutely everywhere. It is impossible to get away from it. And it is the very thing that ultimately cuts us off from God. It's all very simple. It is this technology that leads humanity away from the divine path of evolutionary development. It is a totally disastrous technology. All the rest is a consequence of it. But the reason was that, the distortion of the divine rhythm. So what is the essence of the distortion? After listening to the lecture by Elizabeth Clare Prophet and watching Tatiana Mikushina's video, I could not understand for a long time what they were talking about. Elizabeth Clare Prophet says that a distorted rhythm is a three-count rhythm. Tatiana Mikushina says that this is a rhythm that is a multiple of three. What is a three-count rhythm? The three-count rhythm is one, two, three, one, two, three. If so, that is waltz. Yet the rhythm of waltz does not act destructively, but the other way around. What does the rhythm that is a multiple of three mean? The rhythm that is a multiple of three means that the denominator of the fraction of the time signature written at the beginning of the music piece must be three. However, that cannot be found in any musical piece, including jazz. I asked the musicians that I know, but nobody understood me or could explain anything about this. With God's help, I think I managed to get to the essence of it. Let's try to make sense of it together. We said that a mathematical formula lies in the foundation of the organization of the rhythm of life. It is easy to guess that it is also the organizing principle in music. Let us recall the fundamentals of the music theory and then consider the distortions of the organizing principles in music. Any music piece can be divided into segments. The shortest and the simplest segment is the measure. In music notation, it is denoted by a vertical line. The measure always begins with a strong beat. Besides strong beats, the measure also contains weak beats and relatively strong beats. In musical composition, the division of the measures and the alternation of strong and weak beats is called the meter. The strong beats are repeated in each measure, thereby creating a certain periodic structure. We can say that meter is the pulse of the music, while the regularity of the strong beat is one of the organizing principles of the musical form. The meter, the strong and the weak beats have a significant influence on music. For example, the waltz with 3-4 time differs from the march with 4-4 time just by the meter. One of the main differences between classical music and jazz is the accentuation of the weak beats in the latter, as we said. In the Chicago style of jazz music, as well as rock and roll and rhythm and blues, the second and fourth beats are constantly accentuated, which is unacceptable for classical European music. We have already discussed syncopation being the technique of playing off-beat that is literally missing the beat. Syncopation plus the irregular accent in jazz destabilize the metric structure, and we can draw an important conclusion. The violation in the regularity of the strong beat allows us to speak about the distortion of one of the organizing principles of music. There is a fraction written in the beginning of each music piece. It has a numerator and a denominator. So the numerator denotes the number of beats in a bar which determines the time of the musical composition. But what is in the denominator? 
The denominator of the fraction contains the duration of the notes. We know that whole notes are divided into halves, quarters, eighths, sixteenths, etc. The alternation of the duration of notes constitutes the rhythm. Thus, the unit of measurement of the meter is the beat, and the unit of measurement of the rhythm is duration. While all beats are the same within a bar, the durations of the notes can vary. The concept of rhythm is freer than that of the meter. Durations alternate in multiple ways, forming a rhythmic pattern, while the meter remains unchanged. Although the meter and the rhythm are different concepts, they are constantly working in tandem. The meter pulsates silently. We do not hear it, but we sense it through the rhythm that is based on it. Because the strong beats create silent pulsation in classical music as we know, that pulsation sets the proper rhythm. But when the rhythmic foundation is emitted, what should replace it? The movement through triplets comes in its place with the help of percussion and other instruments responsible for the creation of the rhythmic pattern. Almost all styles of modern music originated in jazz with its characteristic swing and are based on the triplet pulsation. Let's describe triplets and the triplet rhythm or the triplet pulsation. A triplet is a group of three notes of the same duration that is equal in length to two notes of the same duration. For example, one quarter note is equal in length to two eighth notes. And in the case when a triplet is comprised of eighth notes, then instead of two eighths, the quarter note is equal to three eighths. This is called an eighth note triplet. In jazz, the eighth note triplets play an important role. The eighth notes of the triplet differ in duration from the regular eighth notes. While the regular eighth is half of a quarter note, the triplet eighth is one-third of the quarter. That is all the mathematics there is. We can find both syncopation and triplets in the compositions of classical music. But there, they are used as coloration, as a means of expressiveness. In jazz, however, they become a regular pattern, serving as the rhythmic foundation. If you remove the middle note from the triplet, then we will get the swing rhythm. It turns out that two triple eighth notes are merging into one, forming a triplet quarter. Hence the common notation of swing, a quarter note plus an eighth note under a triplet. What is the main difference between playing swing and playing regular eighth notes? Every first eighth note is lengthened, and every second eighth note is shortened by the same duration and the ratio within the group changes. You can see that on the slide. Thus, the rhythm is in the denominator of the fraction, and it is produced by the alternation of different durations of notes. We see that the durations in triplets, though indicated by fourth, eighth, or sixteenth notes, are in fact multiples of three. Thus, the denominator in our fraction is a multiple of three. We have previously said that the denominator, which is a multiple of four, reflects the rhythm of the mother and is the foundation of the rhythm of life. Thus, we have a distortion of the formula of life. Please do not confuse it with a triple meter. Remember that in the compositions with the triple meter, the digit three is in the numerator. That means that the composition is of three, four time which is used, for example, in waltzes and mazurkas. The triplet pulsation lies in the base of all rhythmic variations in modern music styles, which have originated from swing. The triplet pulsation is called shuffle. Now I will show you excerpts from the educational film called The Lessons of Shuffle for Percussion, from which you will understand that this method of rhythmic organization originating in jazz is inherent in almost all styles of modern pop and rock music. Shuffle. Shuffle. I love shuffle. 
Shuffle is a triple pulsation, like any American style it has been formed from swing, the originator of popular music up until the 1950s. Absolutely everything that is used in swing is the basis for any type of shuffle. Back at the end of the 1940s, the blues shuffle was the first one to emerge. You can hear it in early rock and roll and of course in blues. <laughs> All of the following shuffle types branched off the blues shuffle. As I already said, this is the original shuffle, traditional blues, rock and roll, country, rock. To understand it better, let's use one very popular rock shuffle to play all possible music patterns for hi-hat and right cymbal. Played in moderate or fast tempo, this shuffle is often used in pop and rock music. When playing it in slow tempo, we get the most popular blues pattern. Rock shuffle is often played on tonga. You can also play it to create an illusion of two bass drums. Rock shuffles are predominantly used in rock and pop. It's used in R&B music and pop, rock, ballads, hip-hop as well as funk and even f In essence, hip-hop is the half-time played in maximum tempo. To put it in simple words, we play 16th notes not evenly but shuffled. Besides the hip-hop style itself, you can hear hip-hop in any other music style because hip-hop is exactly that shuffle pulsation of the 16th note. So, we see that in modern music, the divine sound and the divine rhythm are distorted at their very foundation. In modern styles of music, the polyrhythm peculiar to African rhythms began to be achieved by the rhythm section. It includes a drum set, bass, and percussion. The rhythm section can also include rhythm guitar, piano, banjo, and any other instruments with which you can diversify the rhythm of the performance. Many people can easily identify by ear various musical styles, rock, dance music, Latino, reggae, and so on. 
but not everyone understands that the basis of these styles are those cyclic rhythmic patterns repeated from bar to bar played by the rhythm section. And almost all of them play syncopated rhythms. For example, in reggae style, the barrel, or the so-called big drum, often misses the first beat and plays on the second beat. Bass also constantly plays its lines, skipping the strong beat of the meter. The guitar or the other instruments playing the rhythm parts emphasize the end between the beats. You can often hear that in rock music, the main percussion instrument is the snare drum. And because the snare drum usually plays the second and the fourth beats, it creates a feeling that these weak beats turn into strong accentuated beats. Thus, the rhythmic distortions of the organizing principles of music have become deeply entrenched in the modern popular music culture and have become part of our life. I should add that sound amplifying equipment, electronic sound, and the use of flashing lights at pop and rock concerts further reinforce the negative effect. Such music aggressively affects the subtle centers and distorts the energy in all chakras. It literally knocks the energy out of the chakras, and the energy moves in a downward direction, resulting in one or another kind of sensual pleasure, in the cult of sex, violence, and in the use of substances that change consciousness, such as alcohol or drugs. This picture shows the body figure of a person. You can see here how the energy in the chakras is distorted. It literally flows down out of the chakras. Elizabeth Clare Prophet says, To prevent this music from carrying the person away, he must have the determination and the understanding of the discipline necessary for raising the energies in the chakras. And this is not easy to do nowadays, being in the midst of the dominant culture, which is a perversion of the culture of the mother. Heavy rock and pop music with their loud, intrusive, monotonous beat that affects the cerebrospinal fluid can literally lead to the rupture of the chakras. This means that the soul gets deprived of the opportunity to continue the evolution. Many rock stars are already such living dead. They live off the energy that they're given by their numerous fans, shouting, screaming, jumping, and applauding at their concerts. We can state that the ragged rhythms of voodoo have become an integral part of our culture, so that it is impossible for people to focus on the higher ideals. On the contrary, the vector of the development of civilization is directed towards the creation and consumption of ever greater material possessions through the use of science and technical inventions and toward receiving ever greater pleasures. Elizabeth Clare Prophet talked about the consequences of distortion of the divine rhythm. When we are outside of the rhythm of life, we are truly outside of life itself, and we cease to exist. We find, then, that it is through the distortion of rhythms, the distortion of time and the warp in space that worlds collapse, souls lose their reason for being, the continents separate, and literally system of worlds pass into void. Cosmic history and the history of Earth's civilizations have many examples confirming these words. In our solar system, between Mars and Jupiter, there is a belt of asteroids. In 1804, German astronomer Heinrich Olbers made the assumption that it was formed as a result of a big planet rupturing into pieces. This hypothesis was based on the fact that the belt of asteroids has its own orbit around the Sun, which is only characteristic of planets. The astronomer called it Phaethon, by the name of the mythological son of the sun god. Indeed, the Akashic records contain the record that in dateless past between Mars and Jupiter, there was planet Maldek, which was destroyed as a result of the misuse of word and sound, 
and turned into a belt of asteroids. Elizabeth Clare Prophet tells us a dramatic story about the Earth's civilizations. Priests and priestesses who tended the flame of Mother on the altars of Lemuria knew the sacred science of sound and rhythm. There were twelve temples to the Mother surrounding the central altar. These temples are now located on what is known as the Ring of Fire surrounding the Pacific. In these temples, then, the raising of the Mother Light released the focal point of the divinity of God in the manifestation of the heart. There came a darkening air of rebellion against the light of the Mother, a perversion of the flame, as priests and priestesses perverted both the sound and the rhythm. By the misuse of sound and rhythm, a cataclysm was unleashed from the Mother Force, sinking the continent of Lemuria by fire and volcanic eruption. This activity then resulted in the loss of the fires of Mother upon the Temple Altar. For 12,000 years, we have not known the presence of this flame in shrine of our temples. Nicholas Rory has a painting, The Mother of the World. It depicts the mother of all creation, who, according to the legend, hid her face from people. Could that be because her children continue to rebel against the mother? Now it has become fashionable to broadcast music of classical composers combined with a modern beat. Many people think that this is a way to popularize classical music. This is a misconception. The false rhythm is superimposed on the proper rhythm. This results in the neutralization of the positive effect of classical music, and the effect produced by this music is the opposite. So, let's draw conclusions. Modern civilization is degrading in the dominant culture. And we are all in danger. Our planet is in danger. Because sound is involved in the process of creation, it is not difficult to guess that if all living organisms, as well as our organs, cells, and systems, vibrate at the frequencies of the divine rhythm, then music being played at an artificial frequency reconfigures and reformats us. And sooner or later, this can lead not only to the destruction of the temple of the soul, but also to the loss of civilization as it has happened before in cosmic history and in the history of Earth. What can we do? What can we do in respect to this shocking information? I think we need to make an effort and revise all our stereotypes, preferences, tastes, everything that seemed to be the basis and the meaning of our life. We need to discard the unnecessary and return to the point where we got lost in order to continue our path to God.